Hi, um, I'm going to welcome Alyssa Pettengill to this episode of Parenting Hacks. This one is, as you can see, on pill swallowing, a guide for parents, and I'm going to turn it right over to Child Life Specialist Alyssa Pettengill. Thank you so much. Um, again, yes, my name is Alyssa. Thank you for tuning in tonight um, for our two brief in services. Um, the first one, we're going to be covering pill swallowing. And then if you stick around at about seven o'clock, I'm going to transition to talking about needle fear and needle phobia. So, and um, during these two presentations, um, we're going to have a live Q&A at the end. So I'll have about 20 minutes or so of content. And then I'd love to answer any um, questions you guys may have. Um, and both of these, I'll be covering, you know, a wide range of age groups. Um, so, but if you have particular questions about your child, your kiddo, I'm happy to answer those as well. So um, because child life, the profession is still wildly unfamiliar to many. I'm going to start with um, just a brief um, overview of what child life is, and then we'll dive into um, the topic. So hopefully my uh, <laughs> slides start moving. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay. So Child life really is the practice of helping children and teens develop coping skills to reduce fear and anxiety associated with difficult medical challenges and life events. And um, this umbrella that you guys see here on the screen is really kind of covers most of the hats that we wear as child life specialists. Um, if we're working in the hospital setting, we're preparing kids for procedures, we're providing um, opportunities for play to normalize the hospital experience. We're also advocating constantly for our patients and our families because we very much know that the hospital setting can be an overwhelming place filled with many different types of professionals. And um, there's lots of different medical terminology that's being used. So it's really helpful to have someone such as ourselves that are experts in the patient experience, and we're able to share, you know, kind of tips and tricks, um, you know, what to uh, ask for to your nurse to make your stay more comfortable, how you can advocate for your child when it comes to um, comfort positioning, which we'll talk about later. Um, and just so that you can feel more empowered as parents, um, because you're in an unfamiliar place with lots of um, things going on constantly. So um, that's a little bit about advocacy, but we also provide procedural support, whether your child's getting an IV placement in the hospital. Um, I do do one-offs uh, Do one -offs where I will go with kids to um, their doctor visits um, so I can help support in the moment for things like vaccinations, um, injections, things of that nature. And I also... Oh, we moved over. Let me see. If we can't go back, that's okay too. Do, do, do. Um, I, we also provide diagnosis education. So um, that may be an acute diagnosis, a chronic illness. Um, we help your child understand what's going in their what's going on in their body in ways that they can understand. So child life specialists have a um, very much a foundation in child development. That's what my uh, degrees are in, my bachelor's and my master's, so that we can um, always take that difficult medical ter terminology and break it down in ways that your child can understand. So that's a little bit about this umbrella of child life. And let's dive into pill swallowing and how to make it a little bit easier if you are teaching at home. So why are we talking about pill swallowing? Um, one, even if your child is completely healthy, it is a um, great, you know, it's a skill that you have to learn eventually, um, especially when it comes to insurance, right? If you're ever needing a certain type of medication, right? When your child is turning close to 18, insurance really prefers that you pay for pills rather than liquids and liquids are often not an option. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but um, also 
pill swallowing, as we know, just, you know, as an adult Advil, when you're, you know, when you're not feeling well and having whatever may come down the line, um, they're often in pill form. So children that are often struggling with pill swallowing are those that have had a history of choking on food, history of vomiting. Um, and that could be from anything, also, um, I find that kids who have struggled with pill swallowing, they tend to have a lot of other medical things going on. So they're just a little bit more anxious when it comes to learning how to pill swallow. Um, and the other thing is about pill swallowing that can be just really beneficial. And when, especially when you're teaching early and I have taught, as you can see in this photo, um, I've taught kids as young as four, um, when you're starting early, kids do not, they're not as in their head about things. Um, they're not thinking about, oh, I could choke. Um, it's much more of a positive experience. And as you'll see, pill swallowing can be very, um, enjoyable for kids as it often involves candy. So let's talk a little bit about that. So one of the things that's just very important to start off with, with kids, when you are introducing the topic of pill swallowing is you want to make it, you want to help them understand the why, why should they be learning how to pill swallow? And, um, one of the things that I like to reiterate is, you know, we have to be as concrete as possible, especially with the younger age groups. You know, we want to let them know this medicine is going to help you poop. This medicine is going to make your, um, make your head no longer feel warm. Um, letting them know how does this affect their body in a positive way. Um, and rather than talking about, you know, let's get you to pill swallow. This is something you need to learn how to do eventually because it doesn't help your child understand the why behind it. But if they know that their tummy's hurting and they can take a pill so that their tummy no longer hurts, they're much more inclined to want to learn how to do it. So letting them know what, what's in it for them. And of course, I like to add, especially with the younger ones, you know, we'll make this fun. There's going to be candy involved um, or there's going to be, you know, different things, whatever you feel appeals to your child. So being simple and concrete is key with the younger age groups, um, taking into their development and taking their cognitive development into account. But when you're talking with your older children, you know, of course, still explaining the why. Um, but the other thing I have found with the older kids, because they can be a little bit more in their head about it, and they also are just more naturally curious um, providing them with some additional information too about the body, because one of the first questions kids often ask me is, well, what's going to happen to the pill? If it, is it going to get stuck? So really sharing with them, you know, a little bit more about our information about our esophagus, the liver, letting them know, you know, there's, um, there's things going on in the liver that help your, uh, body break down foods so that they can understand it's not like their pill is going to go to get down, get stuck in their esophagus and they're not going to be able to breathe or something like that. You always want to provide reassurance that it's safe um, and that you're going to be there and nothing um, bad could happen. So um, really providing reassurance around safety is key with the older kids and providing a little bit more information too about how the digestive system works. And um, so I like to do that a little kind of like science um, lesson before we get going, but, and also validating with them, you know, you're going to be taking it slow and this is supposed to be an enjoyable experience. Um, I find that when you rush things with kids, um, that leads to more resistance, right? So you want to do, you want to try to incorporate pill swallowing before your child actually needs the pills, um, if possible so that you can take it slow. So um, I really love to use candy, as you can see here. And I do have a slide on um, that considers if your child has food allergies or maybe they have diabetes and they have limitations um, to their diet. But really, I like to, if there are no limitations, I like to do candy. Um, 
And it definitely encourages or increases compliance and cooperation. Um, but what I like to do is I first will start as small as a sprinkle. So that way your child immediately can feel like, wow, that was so easy. So starting with a sprinkle, um, you know, it's dissolvable, right? But if you, your child does it quick enough, they start to better understand, okay, like this is what could happen. Look how small this is, you know, this is possible. So showing them it's possible is really important at the beginning. Um, but then what I like to do, it, it also, um, sprinkles allow you to kind of get the feel of the process. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, tips and tricks for that, but, the biggest things are, you know, tilting of the head, using thicker liquids, um, using what I call the the um, fishbowl method. So I'll show that here on the next slide, but I just wanted to turn your attention quickly to um, this picture of the candies that I have here. As you'll see in my pill um, little kit, um, I have mini M&Ms. Um, that's kind of the next step after sprinkles that I typically um, start with. So after they accomplish sprinkles and feel okay with it, we do mini M&Ms. And then I'll either do a Reese's Pieces um, and because that's chocolate that can melt a little bit easier. And especially for those kids that are older and they understand, you know, they may feel more comfortable with something that can melt in their mouth versus something a little bit harder, like a Skittle. So I'll use either one of those. And actually the size of a Reese's Pieces is the same size as um, a child's like Advil. So um, when they're having the flu or when they're feeling sick, that's often what you could get prescribed from your doctor. So if they can do that, they can do um, they can do that type of Tylenol, kids Tylenol. So that's a little known fact. Um, and then if they're having to take a pill that's a little bit larger than that, um, I'll work on, I've done jelly bellies and cut those in half. And I've also done Tic Tacs. Um, and if your child has to take something bigger than a Tic Tac, I mean, there's always, you know, the, um, what's the, what's the larger candy, um, the good and plenties. Um, those are a little bit bigger, not, you know, not as enjoyable, um, but hopefully your child won't have to be taking something that large. So, um, let's get into a little bit of the tips and tricks when practicing. So, um, as I mentioned before, the fishbowl method. Uh, so I would really recommend that um, before moving on to the fishbowl method is having little bits of liquid to begin with. So first wetting the mouth. So that would be the first step, wetting your mouth with a liquid of your child's choice. Giving choices is so important, right? Because it helps your child feel that sense of control. So you can use milk, you can use milkshakes, you can use smoothies, but when you have a thicker liquid, your child is less aware of the candy or pill that is in their mouth. So that's why those are super helpful. Of course, water is always an option as well, but you first want to wet the mouth with that liquid of choice, and then you want to place that candy on the tongue. And I always encourage kids not to put it on the front of their tongue because then that can lead to it being stuck in the front of their mouth. You want to put it in the back of their tongue at the center if possible, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a slide. That is what I describe to kids. Um, you're creating a slide um, as pictured so that your candy, when you take more of that liquid, it just slides right down your throat and into the esophagus and then into the stomach. So um, tilting the head back is very key for that because if they lean over, then their, their uh, candy or their pill comes right to the front of their mouth um, or it starts um, swimming all around. And um, so that's a couple of tricks there. The um, fishbowl method, which I was wanting to come back to, is another option. If your child feels like they want, don't want to just have a little bit of liquid um, and they don't want to take that, you know, big gulp that is required to swallow the, um, the candy or the pill, 
your child can um, create their own fish bowl and put in a lot of water or milk. I wouldn't recommend a thicker liquid than that for the fish bowl method, but you're filling your um, mouth with liquid and then you're taking, then you're slowly swallowing all of it down. Now that is something that can work for some kids, right? Every child is very different. Um, but I would recommend that as a second option, if your child is not comfortable with just doing a little bit of liquid to swallow that candy, um, because the fishbowl method, as you can imagine, the fish kind of swims around. So the candy can kind of get, um, a little bit lost in the mouth. Um, but those are two, uh, great options. Um, and of course, don't forget, you know, praise, praise, praise as your child is learning how to pill swallow. If they swallow that pill um, and on their first attempt, but then they're not so successful with the second attempt, that's okay. Let them know you're, they're doing a great job. Um, they can always try again. I always like to take some breaks in between um, candy attempts, candy swallowing attempts, because um, I like to assess what, what, how it felt for the child. Was it comfortable? Did they feel the pill going down? Um, and also assess, did they understand, you know, what maybe could have done what they could have done differently or what they could have done better? Um, I just had a six-year-old last week um, wrap up pill swallowing with me and he was practicing with Reese's Pieces and the first time he did it, he was like, oh, okay, uh, it didn't, it didn't work out. And he had many um, successful attempts prior to that with smaller candies, but it didn't work out the first attempt. And he knew because of all those others that he had learned how it felt as it was going down his throat. And he's like, you know, I felt at that time. I think I didn't tilt my head back enough or I didn't have enough milk to drink. So what we did is we filled up his cup. I, that's another thing I recommend having your cup filled up about, you know, at least a quarter um, so that your child has plenty of milk to drink a little bit before and also during to get that big gulp. And I like to tell them I want to be able to hear that gulp that they're making. So it's rather than just a, a little swallow. Um, that way we can make that way we can ensure that the candy is being swallowed along with all that milk. So with that being said, um, you know, he understood what he was doing wrong without me having to tell him he had that awareness from, you know, practicing over and over again. And he was able to get be successful in the next four attempts after that. And that just helped build his confidence. I praised him for having that awareness of what was going on in his body um, and he just, after that, at the end was like, okay, I, I know I could do this. So just always provide praise and try and be as specific as possible with that praise. Um, that's just letting kids know, Hey, it's not that I'm just doing a good job. I'm doing a great job, you know, taking big gulps. I'm doing a great job of being patient I'm doing a great job, you know, putting that candy in the middle of my, um, or in the back of my tongue, in the middle of my tongue, what, however you want to say it, whatever, you know, you feel is specific and maybe it's something that they've been struggling with. So you want to keep reminding them of how important that piece is. So you're going to reinforce that by praising that specific thing that your child is doing. So my other big trick um, is fruit roll-ups. Now, um, that's something that not a lot of people are, are aware of, but having worked in the hospital and done this quite a few times over the years, um, fruit roll-ups are great because as we know, no pill is the same, right? Some can be a little bit rough um, and around the edges to where they can feel scratchy on the tongue. And kids, especially now, are very focused on the texture of things, right? And especially when they have a fear of a pill getting stuck or they have a fear of choking, we want to have as smooth of a surface as possible. So with that being said, the hack with the uh, fruit roll-ups is we can take a little bit of a fruit roll-up 
and we can wrap it around that Skittle, that Tic Tac, that Reese's Pieces, whatever candy you're using to practice with so that the candy itself is nice and smooth. The other thing that kids love about it is if they get the choice, which I encourage you to take them to the grocery store with you, is when they get that choice of picking the flavor, whether it's watermelon or strawberry, whatever it may be, they also tend to taste that a little bit too, which is exciting for them. So um, I recommend doing that with any candy that you're practicing with. And then when the real um, deal comes and they have to uh, take a pill, you can absolutely cover it with fruit roll-up. Now, what I'm saying is we're talking about a very small amount here. I didn't bring props tonight, but you're always welcome to, you know, ask me my technique. But really, it is just a small layer around the surface of the, the candy or the pill so that you're creating that smooth surface and you're really just smoothing it all around um, and without adding to the size of the actual pill or candy, because we don't want to make it bigger and make it harder to swallow. So it's all about creating that smooth surface. Uh, so yes, always provide choices. Um, and like I said before, we want to start slow and um, start small. So if your child's telling you, you know, I feel comfortable with the Reese's Pieces, but I'm not ready to take on a Skittle or a Tic Tac, you know, that's okay. Um, you can always... Uh, Go always go back to if you're feeling like, okay, that specific attempt at a Skittle was really tough, you know, let's go back and spill their confidence a little more with a Reese's Pieces before moving forward. Because we don't want um, any kind of scares to happen, whether a child feels like, oh, I didn't, you know, I felt that really in the back of my throat that didn't feel good, or they felt like they could choke. Um, we really want them to be feeling as comfortable as possible. And the whole goal is to empower them, right? To be able to do it themselves. So the technique get really um, becoming an expert in the technique is crucial first. And I always um, bring that up to my clients. I let them know, okay, what are the three things that we need to be mindful of? And they start to say, oh, I need to tilt my head back. T tilt my head back. I'm like, yes, absolutely. Tilting the head back. What's the other important thing? Making sure I have lots of milk. Okay, great. What's the other thing? And for some kids, it is like having the fruit roll up, you know, covering it, covering the candy with that. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes that's not as big of a deal. Um, I do get parents that ask me about use of straws for pill swallowing. I personally uh, don't recommend it um, because your not, ch children are used to swallowing things while drink, you know, tilting their head back while drinking out of a straw. So as you can imagine, that just makes things a little bit more complex. Um, and when you're, you can get a lot more liquid in the mouth if they're just drinking openly from a cup versus out of a straw. Um, so this is just my considerations for kids with food allergies and type one diabetes. Um, I've also worked with kids that are, um, that are kosher. So being mindful of that, you know, Tic Tacs are kosher. Um, you can cut up grapes into little small pieces and practice swallowing with those. Um, I would say banana would be kind of the very first thing you would use, um, because they're very soft. They're very easy to swallow. Um, you know, grapes can be a little bit more difficult, right? Um, so this is, and then dark chocolate morsels, those are lower in sugar, um, but that still makes it more enjoyable for kids. And um, if you have, you know, a chocolate bar, you can cut that up as well. So really, I encourage you to get creative. Um, I know kids can be picky when it comes to food too. So um, depending on what, you know, your child likes, I've also had kids start with as small as, you know, one piece of rice and swallowing that one piece of cooked rice. So that's like a sprinkle, right? Um, so yeah, um, those are some great options if your child has some dietary restrictions. And then um, kind of my last slide here before we go into the Q&A 
is just, you know, managing resistance and anxiety. Um, if your child has gone through a lot medically, or maybe they've had some tough times at the dental office, you know, any kind of medical anxiety like that, um, they might be a little bit more resistant in learning how to pill swallow. And that's totally normal. Um, I really just encourage you to understand the why behind the resistance and build curiosity, but then also validate any emotions they may be, be feeling. You know, I understand you're feeling nervous. Um, you know, I have felt nervous when I learned how to pill swallow or, um, and if you don't remember your own experience, that's okay too. But letting them know, you know, I, I wonder if you're feeling this way because, you choked on that banana one time when you were really little. Like, do you remember that? It's really quite amazing when you ask kids like, hey, you know, have you have you ever choked on anything? They'll be like, oh, yeah, I choked on my peanut butter and jelly when I was three years old. And, and it may be something that they don't necessarily remember about, but maybe their parent told them the story. So then they remember the story really well regardless of how they remember it, you know, building off of that experience and assessing for any misconceptions that they may have, you know, oh yes, I know that you had a, you choked on that that one time, but that was really because of, you know, X, or I know that happened that one time, but you're so much bigger now and you know how to chew your food really well. And with how small this piece of candy is, you're, you're likely not going to choke as long as you drink some water with it or have your milk with it. So um, always end with ensuring safety, letting them know you're right there to help them um, and you're going to take it slow. So um, there's no uh, real, um, what's the word, pressure on them. And there should no, be no consequence either if they're having a difficult time. Um, and like I said, if you have the opportunity to kind of take breaks, um, feel free to do that with pill swallowing. If you accomplish, you master, um, Reese's pieces or the mini M&Ms first, you know, take a couple of days and then start on the Reese's pieces, um, just take breaks, but, you know, make it fun. And then my last slide kind of just talks about, um, pill swallowing aids if your child is required to take a really large pill, um, you know, doctors really do try to work with you on that. So they will try to get a prescription where it can at least be made a little bit smaller. Um, or you can see if you're able to ask them, um, can I cut this at home? What will happen to it? Does it affect how the pill is absorbed into the body? Um, that's just a little, you know, advocacy tip. Um, asking what your options are there. And of course, um, you know, using sticker reward charts. If you are in a pinch for time and your child needs to learn how to swallow pills in the next, you know, four weeks, um, if you're comfortable with it, putting, you know, a prize there at the end, building towards something. And it doesn't have to be something materialistic. It could be quality time with you as a parent. Kids love that. It's, you know, we're going to the park together. We're going to the zoo together. We're doing something together. We're going to the beach. Um, so whatever you feel most comfortable with. Um, and that's, and um, that's pretty much it. I wanted to make sure we stayed on time. Um, but yes, don't forget those fruit roll-ups. Really any kind of brand will do. Um some are more sticky than others, but I use the old classic fruit roll, um, fruit by the foot. So those work great. Um, and any questions? <laughs>